Hey everybody, Brandon Johnson here again, and today I wanted to take a quick look at my live setup. So everything that I would use to play a live show, including my DI, my amp, and even my fan, which I consider to be a really, really important part of my overall live setup. So I just wanted to take a, a quick deep dive into some of the specifics about how I present my sound in a live situation, how I shape my tone, you know, how I set my pedals a little bit and kind of the different situations that I like to use this setup for. So let's check it out. Okay, so let's start with probably what's the most important part of this entire setup here, and that's my DI. So here we have the LR Bags Venue DI, which is, you know, pre pretty common. I would say, I don't know, 90% of bluegrass pickers out there, regardless of the instrument, is, is using this unit right here, this LR Bags Venue DI. And it's extremely versatile, um, and it's, you can use it for you know, guitar, banjo, fiddle, mandolin, even upright bass I've seen it used for. And the reason it's great is because you have a lot of control over your tone. You have a mute switch right here, which is you know, mute slash tune, which means when you're muted, uh, your guitar is in tuning mode, so you're able to use the built-in tuner for that. And when you click off of it, it goes out of tuning mo mode and it goes into the main line. So generally you always wanna keep that muted if you're in a live situation. And then of course we have our boost here and that's, that's important to, to set your boost before you sound check. And that's done in the back. There's, a, there's actually a boost knob all the way in the back where you can, you can set your boost level. And that's for obviously for taking solos. And then of course we have a really nice kind of modeling system going on here with an EQ, um, pretty, a pretty intensive EQ actually. You can set the notch, the tune, um, low mid, high mid, presence, treble, all that good stuff. And, and generally with this, I, I've set it and I usually don't mess with many of these knobs except for maybe high mid and low mid. Sometimes I I think this is set up from the last time I played at the Caboose in, in downtown Minneapolis. So you can see that I had my treble set a little bit lower, my high mids a little bit lower, and then my low mids, I, I bumped those up a little bit so that you know I could get that nice low mid tone. This is a great multi-purpose DI for people to use for just about any instrument, any kind of you know live music situation with acoustic instruments. It's really, really good for that. And so your instrument comes in from here. This is, this is directly from my, my guitar. And this goes into the DI. And then what I have here is I have uh, a send and a, and a return coming out of the back. And that send return is going into my delay pedal. And this delay pedal is something that I use quite sparingly. And really what it's for is it's for very specific musical situations where you want to play less notes, but maybe still kind of fill a little bit of space, right? So if I go, if, if I move away from kind of bluegrass open position flat picking, and I go into more of a kind of an up the neck pentatonic type of a feel, I might kick on this, this delay pedal here, and I have it set very, very just subtle. You know, it's, very, it's not very present. You can see the, the, uh, the level is about three quarters. Um, and you know, it's just something that's meant to be an accent. So if, you're, if you need to fill a little bit of space, for example, taking a solo, you know, a pentatonic blues solo or something like that, I might kick on this delay pedal here and just give me a little bit of delay and a little bit of kind of depth to my overall tone if I'm not playing a lot of notes, for example. So I have it coming from the Venue DI into the delay and then back into the Venue DI. So I use this Venue DI as my main DI. In other words, when the sound guy gives me the XLR cable, I send it out of the back of the Venue DI. And then if you see right here, coming out of the LR bags, I have a cable coming out and going into my Fishman amplifier here. And this is just for me on stage. It's kind of like a little personal monitor that I use. So it doesn't go to the house at all. Um, it does have a, a DI in the back, but I never send it. I never, I never use the Fishman as my DI. I always use my Venue as my DI because it has you know, superior tone modeling. It has nice EQ and, and really, really nice settings that you wanna kind of maintain and send to the house 
So what I use this Fishman for is just kind of a personal amplifier or a personal monitor, which allows me to kind of have a little bit more control over my volume on stage. So you don't have to rely so much on the house monitors to, to you know, hear yourself. You can kind of use this and you can adjust it accordingly. And as far as the tone settings on this are concerned, you know, these change quite regular, regularly depending on you know, the venue that you're playing at. Um, this is just how I have it set up from the last show I played, but you know, this, this can vary, of course, based on your needs and based on what kind of sound you're going for, really. And of course, I always like to wrap the cable when, when, it, comes out of the, when it comes out of the DI, I like to wrap the cable around the handle in case you know, somebody trips on this. It's not gonna damage this jack at all or damage the cable or damage the amp itself. It might pull your amp down, but at least, at least this isn't going to break, hopefully. And another thing, too, is I, I always put a, a blue piece of tape on all of my cables and all of my amps, and it's just kind of a, a, an indication that this stuff is mine, so I can just take one look at it and know it's mine when I'm tearing down. And I also think it's important, too, to use a, a power strip or a power conditioner when you plug in all of your gear because you know power surges do happen they're fairly rare but they can happen and when they do happen they can they can blow all of your equipment all at once sometimes so it's really important to have something in between you know the, the house power and your equipment just in case of course a, a Furman power conditioner is is uh, much more superior to like a standard power strip so that's kind of my basic live setup here it's, it's nothing too fancy. It's, it's quite simple. No big pedal boards or anything like that. I just tear all this down and put it in a backpack, basically. And one other thing I wanted to mention is this fan. So I always, always, always use this fan, no matter what, whether it's the dead of winter or the middle of summer, because there's nothing worse than kind of overheating on stage and sweating too much. And, you know, you want to always make sure that you can kind of keep a Keep a nice breeze flowing on you when you're playing. So I always bring this thing with me. It's a, it's, it's a great thing to have, you know, if you're in a, some dive bar somewhere and you're standing right next to the radiator, you know, you can have this right next to you, keeping you cool. And with the microphone stand, I always like to kind of fit it in here where I can. Um, just always making sure that you have your pedals available to you when you need to hit them. So you don't want to put it like that or something where it's hard to hit your boost button there. So you just kind of want to nestle that in there, and if it's one of these tripod style ones, you can kind of adjust it until it feels right to you. Now another thing I like to do is just put something under here to kind of angle this upwards a little bit. So here I just have this, you know, the Venue DI case that goes with this. So I just stick it under here and I kind of use that to angle it up a little bit so it's, it's hitting me directly as opposed to, you know, hitting me in the knees or whatever, and you can hear it a lot better. So that's just kind of a basic overview of my live setup that I'm currently using. And it's, it's a fairly light setup. I've, in the past, I've traveled with pedal boards and huge Avalon DIs and stuff like that. And I've kind of simplified everything down to just this basic setup. And I found that this is more than enough for any size venue, any size show or performance, and um, you know, any instrument and any musical situation that you could find yourself in. And you don't even really need the, the delay pedal. It's just kind of something a little bit extra to add. So I hope you enjoyed this quick video today. And there's a lot more where that came from on my website, brandonjohnsonguitar.com, where I have over 150 lessons on various different tunes, traditional and modern tunes as well. So definitely go over there and check that out if you're interested. Also drop me a comment below and let me know what you think of this setup or if there's anything that you'd recommend that I add to this that maybe you've tried that you, you really find works for you. Uh, I'd be interested to hear about it, and I'm always looking for new gear to try out. Definitely drop me a comment and a like, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.